The JWST is undoubtedly a great upgrade of the former space observatory of the Hubble telescope. So, it's obvious that differences between the two will absolutely exist. In today's video, we'll share with you the mind-blowing differences between the Hubble and the Webb. And these are really insane. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated on the latest updates about the James Webb Space Telescope, NASA News, and other space updates. The James Webb Space Telescope versus the Hubble Telescope. Will it be as good as everyone thinks? Just as comparing the qualities of two children by the parents becomes a difficult task, NASA also finds it tough to contrast the characteristics of the Hubble Telescope and the James Webb Telescope, or the JWST. Is the JWST a replacement for the Hubble Telescope? Or is the JWST the successor to the Hubble, bearing the responsibility to carry forward the outstanding legacy of the Hubble, albeit in a far more advanced way? The James Webb Telescope is an overly powerful, incredibly advanced, and costly project of NASA. But that doesn't make the Hubble any less inferior to it. In fact, Hubble is the predecessor of the Webb. All the sophisticated features that the Webb has been endowed with are actually the results of improved features that had earlier been applied to the Hubble. Differences exist between the two, and at times, the dissimilarities will reach great heights. The Hubble telescope had attained success by solving various mysteries and anomalies of the universe. If you've watched our previous video, you'll know how captivating the pictures taken by the Hubble are. Structural and modal differences between the two are huge. Anyway, all the scientific goals and aims of the web have been modeled as a result of the motivation obtained from the results delivered by the Hubble. The Hubble Space Telescope was named after an eminent astronomer, Edwin Hubble, while the Webb has been named after the NASA Administrator, James Webb. The most notable distinction between the two is that the Webb has been equipped with a 6.5 meter diameter primary mirror, thus endowing it with a large collecting area. No other space telescope has such a large primary mirror, not even Hubble, because its mirror has a diameter of only 2.4 meters. The difference is overwhelming, because Webb has 6.25 times more collecting area than Hubble. Of course, the space pictures that will be taken by the Webb will have a far greater resolution and clarity than that of the JWST. Moreover, Webb's mirror is made of a really good metal, that is, beryllium. Also, it's highly segmented. Surprisingly, the 18 hexagonal segments that are present here are the size of a coffee table. Since these are plated with gold, the infrared light from the observatory will be reflected well. Hubble only has one mirror segment, so this is yet another core difference between the two space observatories. After the Hubble was launched into space, a strange flaw was spotted in it. The initial images that the space observatory captured were heavily blurred because of some technical problem in its primary mirror. As a result, Hubble was not able to focus on the space entities properly. As a part of the corrective measures employed by the astronauts, a set of corrective optics was designed and installed in the telescope. It was then that Hubble started having a clear vision of the various space entities. Astronauts had to repair and service the Hubble telescope about five times to make it the ideal space observatory to capture things and observe the behavior of various stars, galaxies, exoplanets, and nebulae. However, with Webb, nothing of that sort is going to happen, because, well, the JWST cannot be repaired or serviced. Since it will be positioned at a distance of 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, astronauts won't be able to access it. So, repairing it for some technical flaws is not even a question. That's the very reason why it has been equipped with a highly segmented primary mirror that would enhance its precision manifold. Webb's sun shield is also quite expansive and is almost the same size as that of a tennis court. This very sun shield is aiding the JWST to stay cold. Preventing the Webb from getting overheated is necessary to enhance its precision and observation qualities. And this is obviously not the case with Hubble. 
The Hubble telescope primarily uses UV or ultraviolet rays, as well as visible and near-infrared wavelengths, to trace the presence of several elements in space. Contrary to this, the web makes use of its near and mid-infrared wavelengths. The application of infrared rays is really important to trace the roots of origin of the galaxies, nebulae, and stars to provide the astronomers with a clear understanding of the formations of several space entities in the past. It has been three decades since the Hubble telescope was made functional. The father figure of Webb, that is, the Hubble telescope, was deployed in low Earth orbit in April 1990. On the other hand, the Webb was launched into space just in December of the previous year, that is, 2021. It remains to see if Webb will do things in a far more excellent way than Hubble, Here's an interesting piece of information for you. Ever heard of the South Atlantic Anomaly? Well, this anomaly has forever acted as a great troublemaker, especially for satellites in space. This anomaly is a tiny dent present in the magnetic field of Earth. So it casts an effect on the satellites. The Hubble telescope has no other option except for passing through this spot. So its work, efficiency, and observation capabilities get somewhat affected. But guess what? Webb will not be forced to cross paths with this dent, thus heightening its accuracy to some degree. The Hubble used to orbit the Earth at an elevation of 570 kilometers above the planet. In stark contrast to this, the Webb is not orbiting the Earth at all. Rather, it's orbiting the Sun. What we intend to say is that the Webb stays fixed at a certain point, so it stays motionless concerning the position of the Sun and the Earth. Since the web has a wide sun shield, and also because it will function away from the Earth, its body won't be heated excessively. This will result in greater efficiency of observation and precision as compared to that of the Hubble. Since the Hubble was destined to be placed in the Earth's orbit, it was launched to outer space using the space shuttle rocket. Webb won't require the services of the space shuttle because it won't be placed in the orbit of Earth so the Ariane 5 rocket was used to deploy it in space. Both Hubble and Webb possess the ability to look back in time and offer the astronomers a greater understanding of the formation of galaxies. While Hubble can better observe the behavior of young galaxies, Webb is equipped to study newborn or infant galaxies in greater detail. Hubble has been designed to come up with important information about the formation of the universe 12.5 billion years ago. Powered by infrared vision, the web will offer a clear understanding of the universe as to how various entities emerged 13.5 billion years ago. Greater chances of success lie with web because it will be using infrared light to trace and observe things in the universe. Owing to the continuous expansion of our universe, the galaxies are getting pushed away from us. That's the point where infrared light comes into the picture. The wavelengths of infrared light are longer than those of visible light. So, these can penetrate and go through the dust clouds quite easily. That's what makes Webb special, because it is all set to offer the astronomers precious information and deeper insights into the formation of stars, galaxy, and nebula. Webb can easily trace objects that are 10 billion times fainter than those faint stars visible with no telescope being used to have a look over them. To date, Hubble has provided the astronomers with stunning, captivating images of the galaxy, but now, Webb will do things in a much better way. After all, it is way too advanced than the Hubble. Webb is equipped with four highly powerful instruments, the near-infrared camera, or NERTCAM, the Near-Infrared Spectrograph, or NERSPEC, the Mid-Infrared Instrument, or MIRI, and lastly, the Fine Guidance Sensor slash Near-Infrared Imager and Slitless Spectrograph, or FGS, NIRIS, which make it further capable to observe things correctly in space. Thanks to these tools, Webb can now conduct imaging spectroscopy. So, it's now well equipped to take a spectrum along with every pixel of the image of the various objects in space. What all Hubble has failed to do will be now done by Webb. Webb can now take clear pictures of exoplanets, clouds, nebulae, galaxies, and stars, and also come up with precise information as to whether other planets can support life. 
It can also succeed in tracing the presence of aliens and aiding the astronomers in striking a conversation with these very mysterious aliens. It will be interesting to see how the web can succeed in cracking highly twisted mysteries and can prove to be a true successor of the wonderful Hubble Space Telescope. Which one of these differences between the Hubble and the web fascinated you the most? Let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed watching this video, do press the like button and tap the subscribe button to stay notified and keep watching thrilling videos about the James Webb Space Telescope, NASA news, and other space updates. See you in our next video.